सो वन सेकेंड सिंपल ब्रीफ आर्किटेक्चर जस्ट रिकॉल इट ओके सो हियर इन केस ऑफ स्टर्ट्स इफ यू सबमिट एनी इनपुट फॉर्म द फर्स्ट रिक्वेस्ट ऑलवेज इट यूज टू गो टू एक्शन सवलेट एक्शन सवलेट फॉर दिस फॉर्म इट विल क्रिएट वन एक्शन फॉर्म क्लास ऑब्जेक्ट एक्शन फॉर्म क्लास इन द सेंस इट इज फॉर एक्चुअली वैलिडेशन एंड बैकअप सपोर्ट फॉर बैकअप एंड वैलिडेशन वी हैव टू यूज दिस क्लास वी नो राइट सो दिस बीन क्लास ऑब्जेक्ट इट विल क्रिएट एंड इट विल स्टोर दट ऑब्जेक्ट इन टू सेशन स्कोप देन आफ्टर क्रिएशन ऑफ दिस ऑब्जेक्ट इट विल सेंड द सेम रिक्वेस्ट एंड रेस्पॉन्स ऑब्जेक्ट टू हेल्पर क्लास रिक्वेस्ट प्रोसेसर Request to processor will store data into your bean and it will execute validations here. It will store data into bean, store data, and it will execute validations. If it find any validation errors, it will report the errors to same input page. If there is no error message, it will call finally action class. <coughs> That's it, right? so here for applying validations this left hand side part for executing controller operations this right hand side part we should use so for applying validations here how many approaches we have how many approaches we thought programmatic and declarative there are two ways to apply validations and to provide form backup support by using action form or a dyna action form in case of programmatic approach here we have an action form by using action form what we can do we can apply which validations application level validations or else server side validations server side validations we can apply and it will provide us form backup support the same thing we can do by using dyna action form also you can provide these two features but it is not recommended to use for validations it is useful for backup support dynamic backup support you can provide dynamic declarations by using dynamic declarations you better to use it for form backup support so we discussed one use case also for this one right and the remaining are declarative approach validations coming to declarative approach we have validator form dyna validator form so declarative approach classes declarative approach classes they will provide us two types of validations one is client validations and one is server side validations client side validations they will provide and as well as server side validations they will provide means javascript validations automatically they will generate and as well as server side java validations also they will provide server side java validations client side javascript validations these both and these both are recommended for okay form backup support also they will provide form backup support and here they will provide localization support also okay anyways and these classes are for these two classes are for handling single form operations to handle multi form to handle multi form operations we have here validator action form dyna validator action form by using this we can do multi form handling for doing multi form handling it is useful for doing single form handling these are useful so in this cases how actually actions i mean validations they will execute once again architecture need to be changed here in case of declarative approach validations will not execute through programmatic validate method validations will execute from xml file in case of declarative approach validations it will execute from xml file so who will provide xml file and who will read and who will provide i mean who will execute validations in case of programmatic approach we know request to processor will store data here and it will call validate method here validate method will return a error object based on that error object count it will return error messages or else it may send a request to controller class 
but coming to this declarative approach validations are not responsible of your form validations responsibility only request to processor should take care and validations where we need to write we have to write under xml files in case of these declarative approaches in case of these four declarative approaches validations need to be write under xml file so how actually validation xml files we need to create in case if you have any input form for that input form you have to create one simple validation.xml file and that validations actually predefined validations given under validation rules.xml file validation rules.xml file and to read these validations they given one plugin class the plugin class name is validator plugin validator plugin class validator plugin class will read this xml files and this plugin class will start by your actions are let init method actions are let object when actually it will create at the time of deployment to time itself at the time of deployment to time itself your tomcat container will create actions are let object actions are let init method execution is what init method what actually it will do it will read struts config dot xml file data in this struts config dot xml file we have one tag plugin tag by using that plugin tag you can configure your plugin class here you can configure your plugin class here in case if you configure your validator plugin under struts xml file along with your actions are let init method it will create object of your validator and in this validator it will execute init method again here we have init method that init method job it will read your xml files just it will read your validation xml files what we have to do here just our input validations we have to write here in case if you have any input page not only for one single input page you can have any number of input pages let's say if you have one registration page one registration form and one login form if you have here this registration form and login form validations you can write here for that registration form and for that login form required validations you can write here registration form and comma login form these two forms validations you can write here and the rules where they given under validation rules dot xml file already we have 23 predefined validation rules like email validation date validation expression validations okay so by using that predefined validations for any number of input forms you can write validations here means if your application if it contains like 100 forms here for that 100 forms validations you can write under validation dot xml file only validations then form backup support who need to provide validations will provided by your validator plugin class by writing validation validations under validation xml file you can provide validation support for your input forms but backup support for backup support must be required a bean class so we required bean class here so that bean classes support this validator form or dyna validator form or validator action form or dyna validator action forms will provide so if you want to go through validator form approach the first one if you want to choose if you choose the first one validator form what you should do here for registration form for login form let's say for registration form if you if you want to write bean that bean you need to extend from validator form first approach by using validator form through this validator form if you want to go in case of all these forms in case of all these validators validations need to be write under xml file only but bean declarations for some classes we need to declare here for some classes we need to declare under struts xml file like dyna action class so here the difference between action form and dyna action form in case of action form we need to write a form bean class there we need to declare private variables public getter setters and one validate method also we should write but coming through this dyna action form we can declare properties under xml file right dynamically we can declare properties under xml file so in the same way here coming to validator form you need to declare bean properties here you need to declare bean properties just to, to provide form backup support bean declarations like if your registration form if it contains number of fields like id name email address these bean properties i mean this form properties you need to declare under your bean id name email 
address along with their respective setters and getters just this being for what form backup support only for form backup support you need to write this bin validations it will execute by using this validation xml file data who will execute as per architecture who need to execute these validations whenever you submit this input data your do get or do post will receive right here do get or do post will get this data they will delegate that request again to process method process method responsibility it will create your bean class object and it will store that object into session scope then later it will redirect your request to request to processor request to processor will store data here request to processor will store data here in case of action form and dyna action form request to processor what it will do if your bean class if it is action form or dyna action form if your bean class if it is child for action form or dyna action form request to processor will call validate method here okay request to processor will call validate method here but if your bean class if it is a instance type of validator form or dyna validator or validator action or dyna validator action it will not call any validation scared means it will not try to call any validate method just it will store data then from here it will execute validations your validator plugin class will read this xml files data right after reading this xml files data this init method what it will do it will store that xml data into surlet context to scope it will store your validations xml file data into surlet context scope if anything if it is there in under context scope from anywhere we can get right throughout application so at the time of deployment to time itself your action surlet will call this plugin class plugin class will read your xml files data finally it will store the data into context to scope this request to processor first to store data into this bean after that it will execute validations by reading data from context scope context to scope validations it will execute here it will execute validations by reading your surlet context to scope data if it find any error messages in that context to scope validation data it will return that error messages to the user if there is no error message finally it will send the same bean object to action class action means your controller just here you need to understand what validations will not execute from your bean classes validations will execute from surlet context to scope data who will store your validation xml file data into context validator plugin validator plugin class object when it will create at the time of your action surlet instantiation time itself along with your action surlet instantiation init method of action surlet will create your plugin class object so at the time of deployment to time itself it will read complete validation xml files data that data it will make available through the context scope is there any performance issue here at the time of deployment to time itself it will execute all these operations not at the time of user request whenever you try to request it will not try to read data from xml file at the time of deployment to time itself it will read all the xml files data and it will store into context scope so it will not shows any performance issues while user request whenever user try to request it will store data here and it will get directly data from context to scope and it will execute validations so if you write validations under xml file also no issue here and one more advantage with this validation xml files they will generate javascript validations the benefit with the javascript validations we can reduce the network traffic between server and your browser once while loading your page into browser machine whenever try to load into it to browser machine client machine by loading into client machine it will append javascript validations to your form it will append javascript validations whenever you submit this data instead of submitting it to server validations here itself it will execute on your form itself it will execute getting automatically javascript it will generate which script it will generate it depends on your validation xml file in validation xml file actually java validations we need to apply that validations it will convert into javascript validations while loading your page javascript validations it will execute here in case of javascript if you disable then it will execute validations from server side so two level validation support they will provide here in case if you go through xml file
in case of programmatic we don't have that support but in case of declarative approach we have that support okay so just i'll go through one simple example then you can understand so if you have an input page for that input page if you want to apply validations by using validator form by using validator form if you want to apply validations first thing you need to write bean class by extending from validator form then validations need to write under xml file so simple registration form validations by using validator form approach by using validator form approach simple index.jsp page simple input page and one output page simple success.jsp and one bean class we required write one simple bean registration form by extending from validator form and we required multiple xml files here and the properties files also we required to send error messages we required a properties file messages dot properties file for error messages and for validations we required one validation dot xml file and already predefined xml file we have one validator hyphen rules dot xml file and one web dot xml file with the front controller one struts config dot xml file for mappings between your bean and form and controllers so all over eight components we required here input pages output pages one form bean one properties file one controller controller okay controller not here we don't have here we don't have any controller here if you want to write controller also you can write finally one controller component registration form controller by extending from action class